And we're with John Sappington. He's an artist, he's a photographer, he's an instructor here on the ArtQuest campus where we, uh, we share premises with C Media. How are you, sir? Welcome to the show. I'm good. What happened to photography, man? It started off as this amazing thing and it has metastasized into this, this digital phenomena that's... Yeah, the photographs, it's kind of evaporated into a large graphic, hasn't it? It's, yeah, and it's, and it's in pixels, and it's all over the internet, it's scattered sure. all over Instagram. Our relationship it's with sure. photography is it's totally harder exploded. to locate. Well, sure. but, but, not, but now it's more ubiquitous. It's everywhere and yet nowhere. Yeah. What yeah. is it? What is photography now? Uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of everything. It's certainly in everything. It's hard to locate now the one-to-one -one relationship that it once had with a certain point in time, so maybe it's lost its referent. Well, let's, let's roll back uh, to the history of photography. Originally, it was meant just to capture reality, uh, it, right? With daguerreotypes and all that, it's really just a reflection, a mirror, a, a capturing something that once existed. But yep. when did it evolve into an art? Uh, well, almost immediately, actually. I mean, those documents then, well, the early portrait, well, I don't know which to start with. Uh, someone like Age was making documents just trying to capture historical historical culture, I guess, that he saw evaporating. So, um, but they, the, those, with the, the, I guess, is there a sentimental, if there's a sentimental aspect to art, then probably almost immediately they became artistic objects in that somebody wanted to keep them yeah. for a emotional response. And I, as I've understood, as, I, as I've come to understand, they were also manipulated to a degree. Even at that early stage, there was a, a kind of photoshopping, Certainly. if you will. You know, where photo photographs yeah. were... Well, there's always, a, since there's more than one process in the processing, there's always been manipulation. There's always been some kind of impact to, to the, the overall image. Yeah. So what does that mean for, what is photography then, in that case? If, if, so if it's not capturing reality, or maybe it was at one point, now it's... Well, you said we weren't going to talk about Roland Barthes, though. <laughs> we can't take on You can talk about Roland Barthes if you want. <laughs> well, Barthes is one of your inspirations. Can you, can you explain to us why? Uh, I just like the way he played around with meaning in a photograph, which I'm less, I guess I'm less concerned with medium in the pure sense. I'm more concerned with meaning yeah. and how you attach meaning to images, whether they're photographic or... And, and how that meaning changes over time. So he spent a lot of time, you know, thinking and writing about that. And he was the French post-structuralist literary theorist, right? And linguist. And linguist. Yeah. And so, and in, in terms of his observations of uh, how a work can, conveys meaning, how does that apply to photography? Mm. So, well, photography operates on a couple different levels of meaning. So there's symbolic meaning and, and I frankly couldn't tell you what the other levels of meaning are, but he <laughs> broke down the, sim s s you know, the symbolic meaning yeah. in the imagery and uh, in the objects that are portrayed. So, you know, you, uh, a picture of a horse is not a horse, or a picture of the what is the what is the one brute, brute there's with the, or Marguerite had the uh, CC pipe and not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, breaking down that relationship between the two. Um, so the re the, the referent is. Uh, the, the depiction of the referent isn't the referent. Right. Right. It is merely a picture. Right. And I, I, I just like, I like the confusion that comes out of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I'm, they're confused. Everyone's confused. I, <laughs> I, I like the conflation and the confusion that comes with I like the conflation. With that. That's the, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just in confusion time. <laughs> but, uh, Which is the perfect time to be working in photography, actually. I mean, with the, the way it is now, it's so manipulatable and and like you said, so non-existent that you can play with them. And, and that manipulation, it's, it's baked into the experience of how we, how we do photography. Like Instagram's a great example. It has baked in f filters. It's, it, it, it totally encourages you to change the photograph. That's true. To interpret your reality. You take a selfie, right? You do your duck face. Yeah, I'm really into selfies. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And, then you, and then you decide, now this makes me look more awesome. You hit the awesomer button, and then you share it to the world. 
that's not, I mean, fr curious. first off, the selfie, what, you know, what, what are Well, we're self-obsessed as a culture, so it's kind of perfect. Is, is it that we're self-obsessed, or has the ability to make a selfie made us self-obsessed? Mm -hmm. No, I think we were self-obsessed before we got there, but right. this definitely feeds into that. I, uh, well, we'll see what future generations yeah, they're, they're going to despise us. us. They're going <laughs> to, you know. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, with the advent of the uh, reverse camera lens, like like on your iPhone, like you have a camera that faces outward and then a camera that faces inward, right? This is the first time in history that photography has become a conversation with the mirror, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And maybe that's good. Well, how, how is it good? Hmm. Well, now at least we're talking back right. to our image. So then maybe we can shape the meaning in a different way. Yeah. And, and we're hopefully talking to others, or others are at least talking to our images, often with their own images. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of you, <laughs> and I'm going to post it to the internet. What filter would I put on? And it can be <laughs> that's a good right. One. And, and, and by filter, I mean like, you know, spiritual, uh, you know, psychological. Where are you? Right now. Mm -hmm. How do, what's, the, what's the sapping How about filter? the younger filter? Can we go to the younger <laughs> ones? It's, it's, we'll try that. We're, we're talking with the artist, photographer, and uh, educator, John Sappington. We'll be right back. And we're back with John Sappington, a photographer, artist, educator. Uh, we're riffing a bit on Roland Barthes, and, and we're hoping no Barthes scholars are watching, I think, as <laughs> we're talking yeah, <laughs> during this break. Weird. Ignore everything about Roland Barthes. Uh, but so Sarah, let's, no, uh, Derry Doff? No, he okay. just rolled over in his grave. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, we're sort of at, at an interesting juncture in terms of what photography means for a culture and, and how we manipulate and all that. How mm -hmm. do you teach photography in this environment? Mm -hmm. Well, I start, I, I of course, I'm starting at the beginning, so I always bring in a lot of history and kind of follow with the flow of it. I, I couldn't really say that I get to what is contemporary theory with regard to photography. Yeah, like I, I mean, are we starting with students uh, with film, or are you going straight to digital? Uh, well, periodically I do film too, but mostly it's digital. Yeah. Beginning students with digital, though, uh, a lot of them, you know, just coming to the, their first camera or, or just approaching it. So we start at the beginning, and I try to show them past history and what pho photography was, starting with someone like Edward Mybridge is always my launch right. point, Mybridge which is document. With the, the horses, right, which essentially led in some ways to the development right. of the motion picture film. Animal locomotion. Yeah, yep. which is fascinating stuff. How do the kids, uh, do they have an appreciation for that since photography is such a fluid, intangible, digital, often phenomenon for I them? think they're always shocked to see that it's existed for so long and that there's a relationship between the images that they themselves are playing with and what has been going on for so long. It's kind of like memes, mm -hmm. you know, a kind of popular, trendy kind of concept that floats around a lot these days. Memes, I pulled a book out for my high school classes the other day. It's the history of memes. It's yeah. kind of the earliest text I could find about memes, and it's from 1979, and when the kids looked at the, they actually <laughs> looked at the date of the book whenever I passed the book around, they were like, memes existed prior to the internet or prior to me? I didn't know that. <laughs> Things existed. When it, was the it, term coined? That's a was it Dawkins who made up the Richard Dawkins? Yeah, so yeah, yeah he does about, the intro yeah. to that. They were but, just yeah, shocked that it was goes so far back. And I think photography is the same way. It's like yeah. imagery. They know that there is you know historical precedent for what they're doing, but I don't know. It has divorced itself so much from early document that I think looking at photographs. Well, I can't imagine what their their sense of the history looking at an Edward Mybridge photograph say even of a, sel a selfie, which mm -hmm. Mybridge did quite a few selfies. Oh, I didn't you know, know that. Was, I didn't he, he's one of the animals in locomotion that he documents. And is he the man, the naked man walking? He's there? the guy with the big, long, gray, gray. beard. And the, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's Mybridge. Um, I wonder if they are able to associate that. I mean, it has a whole process. So whenever they see it, I think it has a whole process that is, a, you know, it has that magic to it. Mm -hmm. And so it may, not, may, may be somewhat divorced from what they're their own experience of a photograph is like the selfie, you know, that concept of a selfie from the phone, say, versus a selfie like Mybridge created that has this structure, that has this apparatus, you know, it has the whole gridded structure in the back and you see him walking and you right. know, then 
that that's a whole different process than what they're going through. So. Do you think the the antecedent of the selfie is the self portrait, like as as, as painted by artists? I mean, it, it would seem so on the surface, and yet that's a completely artificial process. Where it's a and that one's so much different too, because yeah. someone else is observing you. Right. I don't know. I think I don't think the selfie or or the self the self portrait. Well, I guess it does. You know, the mirror. It does come in with the mirror. Everything kind of starts with the mirror, actually. Without the mirror, we wouldn't have had photography. So, yeah, it's all about the mirror. Yeah. So I guess that's when it starts. It's really not. I don't know that the the painted portraits is certainly different than the portrait. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, good yeah. point. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of reflections and stuff like that, do you see your your own aesthetic uh, reflected in that of your students sometimes? Do you influence them like that? I've forgotten what my aesthetic is. Actually. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, what is it? What is your work like right now? And and we'll we can show some of it. Uh, online here if you like. Mm. Uh, actually, I've tried to remove myself as much as possible from the work in the last, say, 10 years. I, I certainly couldn't look at the last five years and understand or even see myself necessarily in my work. Uh, most of my work's gone toward education now, so mm -hmm. in the last five years. But if I were to look back in the last 10 years, I've tried to get out of the way. A lot of my work was journalistic prior uh -huh. to the last 10 years. Well, do you think that education has diverted you from uh, what was maybe a native artistic impulse? A self-engagement. Yeah. And maybe, that, maybe that's a good thing to sort of get outside the self a bit. Yeah, uh, certainly. Yeah. I could see that. Um, uh, I wonder then, uh, when you are evaluating your students, how do you recognize talent? How, how, how do you see... In photography. In, in, in specifically, yeah, yeah. It's a sense of awareness, I think. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought. As soon as you said that, I was reminded of a student I had last spring mm -hmm. who was essentially ineffective as a student. <laughs> but, I mean, he was, you know, it, it, impossible to assess in a standardized kind of form where I would give them assignments. He couldn't deliver on assignments, but he's, he had a keen sense of the moment. Like, he could recognize he could recognize a moment for what it was, that it was something significant that needed to be documented, but, but he could also recognize a uh, certain, certain light, a certain color combination, a certain, I don't know what it, I don't know. It just, uh, just, I'm curious, you know. could he articulate that or could he only recognize it and depict that he had? Well, he could, he could actually make a photograph. Yeah. I mean, the camera, the apparatus gave him the opportunity to actually articulate, right? I mean, you know. Yeah. Capturing something is th that it's is a form of articulation. Yeah. If you're able to, and he was able to bring the photograph. He wasn't just wasn't able to organize it into some kind of a presentable form necessarily, but he could present the image itself. What do you it, think that kind of experience affords a student like like him who who doesn't? It gave him a voice. That, well, not a, you know that kind of voice. It gave him a means to to ex yeah express himself. It gave him it gave him a way to actually join also to be part of right because I, I don't think he couldn't have articulated what he was capturing necessarily verbally with language but he could articulate through the image and through that apparatus he was able to find himself out there somewhere reflected so yeah it did that for him that's that's important yeah is, is, is was that satisfying to you as, a, as an instructor to yeah yeah that's always the most exciting part also and as an art teacher I think you are often providing an alternative to you know, in an English class, you have to be able to write, right? And if you can't write, you're probably going to suffer one way or another. In an art class, you just have to be able to make an image. And if you can make an image, usually an art teacher will excuse everything else for that. Yeah. You know, they'll give you that. That's the, and that, that's the most important thing to me. How, how important is it as an art teacher to also be an artist? Well, I think it's critical. I don't think you'd have an understanding of what the whole process or what their struggle is. And not necessarily that all artists have to struggle or that the creative process is necessarily painfully, you know, painful struggle. But mm -hmm. you don't understand the process if you haven't made it. You also don't understand the satisfaction. I don't think you could necessarily recognize talent without having had some. Either. Right. Like if you can't make something that you feel is successful, whether or not someone else, you know, not everyone's going to like everyone's aesthetic, but if you can make something and feel like you were able to articulate yourself and arrive at something, then 
then you'll understand it whenever someone else feels that satisfaction. So if a student brings to me a drawing that they feel like they've made progress, they in fact more than likely did make progress within right. themselves. And I wouldn't be able to understand what that elation is or what that process is of struggling with that or coming to that if I hadn't had that experience myself. And then how would I, then I would just be assessing them. I could like, you know, the state would pass down the assessment guidelines and I'd just look at the work and I'd make an assessment, which then we'd lose a lot of really good artists because right. they would just slip right through that. And this is fascinating. So we're with John Saffington, educator, artist, and photographer. We'll be right back. And we're back with John Saffington, photographer, artist, educator, uh, here on the ArtQuest campus where we share premises with C Media. We were talking a bit uh, about how you, you use photography, uh, uh, well, how you instruct photography. Let's talk a little bit about how photography fits into the other arts, as it seems they're all sort of integrating these days, or have been for a long time, knitting mm. together into one sort of phenomena. Is photography being taken for granted? Is it merely a visual backdrop? Or is it front and center still? Well, I think it's not necessarily front and center. I think, um, well, I think, I think uh, time-based media is probably taking the four, you know, it's probably in the front. Yeah. Uh, you, it, there for a while, it, it stills, uh, certainly photographic stills or however, I, it's so difficult now to keep track of how you refer to both time-based and still media. I know, I, I usually say about narrative it. for time-based, but that it fails with music, because music's time-based, but yeah. not necessarily narrative, it's a mess. Yeah. But time-based imaging is certainly at the, I think, the, the, at the fore of everyone's mind. Like the selfie is, it, it, it's even evolved into, you know, it's it's not a single image. Mm -hmm. It's it's a sequence of images. It's a it's it's more like a, the GIF, the animated GIF file. Right. The the you know, I, don't, I don't think they have a name for it necessarily. But I think at the core, the where we are right now in the arts, I think photography holds the kind of core of all me everything going on in the arts. Actually, I think it's become much more centralized because if you look even at painting. And I, I'm, I'm a diehard, or a, uh, I've been completely swayed by David Hockney's mm -hmm. theories around uh, the emergence of photography within painting and drawing and the impact that the invention of photography, the convex mirror, the invention of photography had on painting. Mm -hmm. And to look at painting and look at you know the evolution of perspective and the sense of 3D and realism and all of that, that all is grounded in the photographic art, basically, or in the emergence of photography. And that goes back to about the 14th century. So I think the influence of photography is just firmly at the core of everything within the visual arts, at least. And then photo photography, we were talking a little bit. Of, uh, my background, my undergraduate degree was a split, which I was able to do just because I decided that's what I would do was, <laughs> that's art school for you, that's why you go. Love it. <laughs> but it was half performance and half photography. And photography lends itself really nicely to performance or it lends itself to interact interaction well, so can, to speak can you describe that a little bit like uh how, the, how you marry the two on in a uh, uh I, I i built a lot of props and sculptural elements that were engaged or activated through performance that were then documented and okay. understanding that performance doesn't exist necessarily in live form it might exist in a time-based media but a lot of times, art performance within the arts exists as document. Where in, in retrospectively, yeah, yeah, I agree. And at the time, I was really into performance as narrative or document or all of that. So I kind of intended it for that purpose. And they were often performances developed around a single image that I knew would come out as the document of that. But, um, but it was a way to engage with people socially and uh, act out certain concepts in a way that I could extend the photograph into. So one in particular was, you know, there's a filter effect that you could sepia tone an image and make it look old. Right. And I took a toaster and I took a series of images and I was able to sepia tone them by toasting the images in the toaster. <laughs> and then it was almost like, and you could see them as they browned. So I'd put the image into the toaster and I had an audience and there's a whole prop and a thing and it's, <laughs> I'm 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 engaged I'm in, 
I'm interactive with the photograph and I'm toasting it and aging it as we're there. And so it's, you know, it burns up and kind of slowly, it, it was really nice effect. It would just turn kind of that perfect brown mm -hmm. sepia and then it would just turn black and then kind of crumble and evaporate. But that was a time-based <laughs> experience. So what you see is the document of just the toaster and the whole apparatus that held the toaster. But that's great. But it was a whole performance thing, that kind of aging a photograph through that. Do you think you'll get back to that? It seems like we're all, our culture is ready for that again. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's, certainly. There's like there's a lot of opportunities, technologically speaking. There's a lot of opportunities for things like that to become. I mean, streaming. Yeah, it's going to say what a concept. If performance is the document, suddenly you have a way. Oh yeah. yeah. If, I, if, they yeah. Would, if I'd have had streaming, that would have just. I'd be so embarrassed right now. I'd probably be. <laughs> of all the things, I mean, we did, we did a lot of performance that were, you know, marginally photographic. Well, this has come up a couple of times where you know there's this sense of uh, uh, future regret, <laughs> you know, as an artist for things you said or, or might say or, or well, I mean, yeah, as an artist, uniquely, you're creating things that document your, you know, like uh, Bruce Nauman. All of the photos, or 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 Lucas Samaras with his self portraits in his kitchen, naked, you know, doing all of those. And I think of all the you know, we were talking about the selfie and all of these photographs that we have. And you're documenting your own existence. You're really putting yourself out there his, as a historical object. Yeah, essentially. But it's I mean, frightening. Maybe we are supposed to be embarrassed, so we're continually continually spurred on to create more and different. I have a, I have a really good friend who says. Yeah, he, he, if you're not uncomfortable in your day-to-day, -day, you're really probably not accomplishing anything. And his objective, I think he lives by that, is that he tries to put himself in situations where he is truly uncomfortable because then there's a kind of growth. So, right. Which is interesting because I'm, uh, I just, it's kind of a plug, but a, uh, we're curating a new show that'll open in August at the museum, the Art Museum of Sonoma County, that is all nudes. Yeah. It's an all nude show. And in that process, we've been doing a lot of research on nudes through time. And so I went back to early 1859, 58, 59, and moving forward. And I'm looking at these early nudes and the, uh, thinking about the people in the actual shots. Right. And uh, they're very present in the photograph. Like it's not, they, are, they had no recognition of this as document. They didn't think about it as you know, the staged moment, mm -hmm. they were present. Wow. They were actually experiencing that moment and they were not, they had no facade. Like we have a, we've developed a cultural facade. Like I know I'm being looked at. Right, yeah. I have a sense of that, that self-consciousness, but they didn't have that. And in the photograph, you can see the sheer, they're, they're playing, they're drunk, they're likely <laughs> drunk, right? They're likely prostitutes, but, but, but despite that, it's not, it's not a necessarily a tragic moment, that moment that they're being photographed. Yeah. It's probably a heightened moment. It's like, it's, it's like a highlight. And you can see the, the glee or the, 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 the happiness and the goofiness in their eyes in the presence of their, at making this document that they have no idea extended across, you know. Centuries. Centuries, <laughs> yeah. really. And here it is. But it's, it's a, they're, I mean, at the same time as they're like, you know, very, oh my God, it's a, it's a nude. Uh, at, at the same time, it's like, wow, look how happy. Look at that moment that they truly captured this moment of sheer abandon, right? Because a yeah. nude implies abandon. So I was, I was really surprised to see that. I don't know how that relates to what we were talking about, but... Anytime we can end on, on nudity, I, on nudity, we win. Yeah, yeah, we win. Exactly. We're speaking with John Sappington, educator, artist, and photographer. Uh, thanks for coming. I hope you come back. Was, uh, we have, we have oh, much more you. structuralism yeah, to talk fun. about. It was fun. You, you have to tell me what it is. That, that way I can actually talk to you. <laughs>